is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony today we are in the new 2020 toyota corolla courtesy of hanover toyota in hanover pa and i am super excited to be in this one today because i have reviewed the corolla every single year partly due in part because it is one of the most reliable cars out there so it is a sure bet when it comes to reliability so let me just jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as expected there are several different trim levels for the 2020 Corolla. First one being the L. That one starts at $19,500. LE starts at $19,950. Hybrid LE. And this one is a new trim level for the 2020 Corolla. That is going to start at $22,950. SE CVT, which is the one we have today. That one starts at $21,950. SE 6 Speed for $22,650. XLE for $23,950. And the XSE for $25,000. $450. Oh, but so then, as you can imagine, with all of those trim levels to choose from, there are a few different engine setups as well. First one being a 1.8 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder belonging to the L, LE, and XLE trim levels. That one puts out 139 horsepower, 126 pound feet of torque, sent to the front wheels through a CVT, giving you MPG numbers at 30 in the city, 38 on the highway. Then the second engine option is going to belong specifically to the hybrid LE. That one is a 1.8 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder, giving you 121 horsepower, 105 pound feet of torque, sent to the front wheels once again through a CVT, giving you MPG numbers 53 in the city, 52 on the highway, including EV and eco driving modes as well to help stretch out those MPG numbers even further. And then the third and final and the most powerful engine setup for the Corolla, being a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder belonging to the SE and XSE trim levels. This one is going to put out 169 horsepower, 151 pound-feet of torque. Once again, sent to the front wheels through your choice of either a six-speed manual or CVT. And with this one, MPG numbers are going to come in at 29 in the city, 36 on the highway for the six-speed, and 31 city, 40 highway for the CVT. And with this engine setup, you will find normal and sport driving modes, and that's actually going to be reserved for the CVT transmission with these SC trims. But anyway, since we do have that setup today, that sport driving mode is actually actually located just in front of the shifter there. So let me press that here and let's do a quick little acceleration test. <laughs> it's a little bit wet out today, so pretty decent acceleration actually it's not horrible but the wheels were spinning a little bit because like I said it did rain just like 30 minutes ago so the ground is a little bit wet but still not too bad another thing I have not mentioned yet is with the SE trim levels if you push the shifter all the way to the left you do have paddle shifters so let's test those out real quick here they actually react pretty quickly, but I will say it is still a CVT they're using paddle shifters with, so you guys know what I'm saying there. But still fun to play around with because they are instantaneous when you hit them, so it's pretty cool. But so now to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front for all trim levels, you will find 10.8 inch ventilated front discs, in the back 10.2 inch solid rear discs, and as far as the braking feel goes, I have had absolutely no issues in my short little driving stint today. The Touching on suspension a little bit, all trim levels are going to be the same when it comes to that suspension setup. Up front, you will find an independent McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, a multi-link rear suspension along with front and rear stabilizer bars. And as far as the steering feel goes, I've had absolutely no issues. It's definitely not the heaviest steering feel, but it is, I guess, what you would expect for the Corolla, so it's definitely not bad. Now, as far as ride quality goes, this is something that definitely surprised me. And I honestly have no idea what other reviewers have said about this, but we have plenty of railroad tracks here in Hanover and the Corolla soaked them up very, very well. So when it comes to ride quality, the 2020 Corolla is definitely better than most of its competitors in my opinion. So I'm absolutely loving the ride quality on this thing. And now as far as cabin noise goes, you can hear a little bit of the exterior wind noise coming into the cabin, but it's not bad. I guess it's again as expected for a compact car and then touching on visibility, absolutely no issues there, especially with the sedan. Not gonna have any issues whatsoever with visibility. I can see perfectly fine out the back. That being said, those second row headrests are kind of beefy, so with some cars, they kind of fold down into the rear seats, but not with the Corolla. They're kind of 
attached. They're part of the rear seats. I guess that might obstruct your visibility a little bit, but really absolutely no issues. This is a sedan, so you're not gonna have any problems with visibility. But so now enough with the driving dynamics, you guys. Let's check out the exterior of this completely redesigned 2020 Toyota Corolla. And so to start up front, all trim levels will come standard with LED headlights along with LED daytime running lights as well. And again, in the middle there, there is a completely redesigned front grille for the 2020 Corolla. And it's gonna differ slightly actually, depending on the trim level that you go with. And really it's just the L trim levels versus the S trim levels it's gonna differ with. But make your way to the side, body colored power adjustable side mirrors will come standard. And then we'll come heated with integrated turn signals if you go with the XLE or SXE trim levels. Take a look down at the wheel setup. 15 inch steel wheels will come with the L. 15 inch alloy wheels will come with the hybrid LE. 16 inch steel wheels will come with the LE and 16 inch alloy wheels with the XLE. And lastly, 18 inch alloy wheels if you went with one of the SE trim levels. And then swing you around to the back, there is a rear spoiler specifically for the SE trim levels. LED taillights will actually come standard on all trim levels along with trim level badging back there. Just below it all, body colored rear diffuser, again standard with the SE trim levels. All trims will give you a single exhaust outlet down below, and you'll actually get dual chrome tips if you go with the SE trim levels, so that's kind of a cool look, but nonetheless, you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. <laughs> So now make your way to the back. When it comes to opening that rear trunk, there actually is a button on the key fob if you go with the LE trim level and up. But once opened up, cargo capacity is gonna come in at 13.1 cubic feet. If that was not enough space for you, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space if you needed it there. Make your way to the rear leg room. That is gonna come in at 41.4 inches. That is a good bit of space, you guys. For reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. There is also a rear center armrest with cup holders if you go with the LE trim level and up. Then make your way to the front seats. Manually adjustable cloth seats will come with the L. You will get a power driver's seat if you went with the LE trim level. Premium sport seats are going to come with the SE. That's what you're looking at right now. And you will find heated seats if you go with the XLE or XSE trim levels. And by the way, those two trims are also going to give you a soft tex upholstery with an 8-way power adjustable driver's seat, including power lumbar. To take a look forward, there is a tilt and telescoping steering wheel. It will come leather wrapped for the SE trim level and up. And then when it comes to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Toyota logo on the one side and when you flip it over, lock, unlock, and again, that button to pop the rear hatch possibly. But this is where it gets interesting. For most vehicles out there right now, almost everything is a push button start these days, but for the Corolla, if you wanted that push button start, you're gonna to wanna to go with the SE six speed, meaning I do not have a push button start in this SE CVT or the XLE or XSE trim level. So really only the top trim levels for this one. So not a bad thing, just interesting. But what started up taking a look at the gauges, you will find a tachometer on your left. Speedometer is gonna be front and center. And on the right, you will find a lot of very useful information. For instance, the speed limit of any given road that you're on was being displayed as I was driving on that right digital gauge setup. That is something that you don't usually see in vehicles, at least not within the gauge setup. You usually see it on the infotainment display, but that is pretty cool. I was definitely loving that. Of course, you have your outside temperature on that digital display along with what driving mode you're in and some other important information up there as well. But then make your way to overall interior quality. I love the redesign of the 2020 Corolla. It's definitely a more clean design compared to last year's model. For instance, this aluminum trim around the vents on the passenger side there continues all the way through the center of the car and kind of ties into the left side vent as well. Absolutely love that. It's very clean lines and I always am a fan of the two-toned color setups within a vehicle. And in this case, we have the white interior with the black interior. And another cool thing is just above the white interior on the passenger side there, there is a little digital display. So although it just says passenger airbag off, I didn't expect that to be a little digital display behind that. So that's pretty cool too. But anyways, getting off the design a little bit, a power moonroof will be available for the 2020 Corolla along with a wireless phone charger and ambient lighting. But now let's make our way to the tech display. You will find a seven inch color touchscreen display if you go with the L trim level 
8 inch colored touchscreen display however is going to come standard on every single other trim level of the 2020 Corolla. Either way though you're going to get Bluetooth and audio streaming as well as Apple CarPlay. No Android Auto quite yet at least for the 2020 Corolla at the time of this video I should say. But you can also check out your driving statistics up on that infotainment screen as well as your radio settings as expected and by the way when it comes to the sound system every single trim level will give you a six speaker sound system however there is an optional nine speaker JBL audio sound system available if you wanted it but I do not have that one today so let's turn on the radio see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this six speaker sound system that we have today it's not bad not the most bass I've ever heard but for six speakers that'll work definitely not a bad sound system for the Corolla but then the last thing on the tech display I wanted to mention to you guys is when you do put this Corolla in reverse you will find a rear view camera for every single trim level letting you know who or what is behind you which is always is going to lead me into safety and so to start you will find front side and side curtain airbags also a driver's knee airbag up front along with the passenger seat mounted side impact airbag then in the back you're gonna have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats also rear child door locks back there as well but perhaps my favorite part about the safety on the Corolla is Toyota Safety Sense 2.0 which is going to come standard for all trim levels and what that is going to actually include is pre-collision system with pedestrian detection lane departure alert with steering assist road edge detection with sway warning automatic high beams road sign assist which is what I was mentioning to you guys earlier on the gauge setup there also lane tracing assist dynamic radar cruise control a lot of these safety features here they're optional on other brands including luxury brands as well but Toyota puts some standard on their Corolla that is pretty sweet and one additional safety feature if you go with the XLE or XSE is going to be those blind spot warning indicators in the side mirrors and so but that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching be sure to like the video and subscribe for free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there and I will see you guys in the next video stay gold this might be the only